Hi everyone, welcome. This bin over here that we got in front of us is my so-called mixed bin. And I call it that because there's a variety of worms that inhabit this bin. It's, uh, it's red wigglers, blue worms, and European night crawlers. And it looks like a couple unfortunate explorers made their way out onto the top of this plastic and unfortunately dehydrated before they could find their way back into the nice damp confines of the, the bin. So the system has been sitting out here in the bright light for a few minutes as I was getting my things together. And while I saw a pretty good sized worm sitting there right beneath that pink plastic cover, the, the worm must have sensed the bright light coming through the plastic and retreated down into the bed. But usually, um, usually when I pull one of my systems out off the shelf, and we explore it this way. There's usually a couple worms hanging out near the top. But in this case, maybe that little pause while I was getting my things together uh, resulted in the worms retreating down into the bed. This piece of paper, I'm questioning whether I will be able to use it again as a top covering the way I'm using it here. Or maybe it would just be better served as a, um, a little bit of supplemental bedding to go into the bin along with the feeding that I'm giving them. So this bin has been in service for 22 days and it was uh, last fed eight days ago during the, the last um, introduction of worms into the bin. I was moving the worms out of another older system that was winding down and being brought to a, a close or to an end. And I believe it was uh, three haul outs of worms from the old system that these guys occupied. Um, and the the last and the last haul out eight days ago included a feeding. I took a quick look at the video. I believe it included stuff like strawberry tops and maybe some other veggies and fruits, but I don't recall exactly what it was. But I would imagine that after eight days, this um, this population of worms may have already done away with that stuff because so I don't think it was a very large feeding. So um, I'm going to come in here with some more food today and replenish the food supply. It's a fairly new bin, so I would assume that a lot of the, um, the bedding that I used to originally build the bin with is probably still here and intact in large part. But since you can never really go wrong with lots and lots of bedding in your worm bins, I've got some additional chunks of cardboard here, some tubes cardboard tubes, toilet paper tubes. They're starting to stack up because my my ability to compost materials lately has been reduced a lot because I, I lost a couple of my red wiggler populations recently. And if they were still around, they would be helping me do away with a lot of my kitchen scraps and cardboard stuff and whatever that's all stacking up over time here. But since I'm now with a reduced number of worms, my um, my supply of stuff has just been piling up lately. <laughs> it's a good thing that I've got an outdoor worm bin and an outdoor compost bin so that I can once in a while just relieve myself of some of the stuff that's just starting to occupy a little bit too much space. This bin, I think we had estimated that there might be about a, I don't know, maybe 1,500 or so worms in here. Every time I would haul out some worms out of their new environment and position them here in their new environment, we would um, we would ask the viewers to provide a little estimate of how many worms they think they saw. Look at that. <laughs> and um, I, we sort of average the numbers that everyone says and my, uh, my spreadsheet, if I'm not mistaken, um, averaged the count within this bin to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 1,500 worms. And that seems about right when you dig down and you find a nice pile of worms like that in one particular spot. You have to assume that there's probably other spots that have similar mobs hanging out. And over on this side, I think we're seeing more of the same. These really, really quick moving worms, those are the uh, the blue worms. 
Then once in a while you'll see a similar looking small red worm that's not quite as fast. Those I would have to guess are the, um, the red wigglers. And then once in a while you'll see a big fat worm <laughs> like this guy. Those are the, uh, the night crawlers, the European night crawlers. So there's not much going on here. It's just your typical fairly young, less than a month old bin that seems to be ready for its next feeding. I, you know, I saw lots of leftover bedding bits, paper and cardboard and stuff, but I couldn't really identify any leftover scraps of food from the last feeding. And I mean, it was mostly, like I said, strawberry tops and stuff, so stuff that would probably um, get broken down quite quickly over the course of eight days. So I think we're coming in here at a fairly opportune time. Let's see how I can sort of spread out these cardboard paper towel, actually not paper towel, toilet paper rolls. I think I had chopped up maybe four or five of them. So we've got how many? Eight or ten. I just sort of cut them in half to make arcs out of them. So I think I've got a couple left over. We'll just position them along the edges here. Maybe I could just squeeze one more in here. And that's going to give us that uh, ability for creatures to crawl beneath if they wish. <laughs> but this stuff, once it gets damp and a little bit of weight goes on it, it's just going to collapse. So it's not going to remain like tunnels for very long, I don't think. So why don't we just continue enhancing the, um, the bedding foundation by putting some of these scraps of paper that we encountered on the way in around these tubes. So I always like to sort of position some bedding materials beneath the food so that as the juices and stuff start to flow out of those foods, they've got some place to go other than just sitting at the bottom of the bin. And it seems like if they, the juices out of the fruits and veggies soak into some cardboard and paper, then those bits of cardboard and paper will probably become just as tempting for the worms as the food itself. So I've got a couple worms that are starting to climb the walls. They probably don't appreciate the intrusion. So I won't be in here for long. Let's just um, let's plop in today's food. It was pretty generous, I suppose, if you look at it. There's a half of a pear that went bad. That, well, that looks like it's going to be sort of the, um, the highlight. I bet you that's going to become a really popular item. So we'll stick that in the middle. And this is like the, the butt end of maybe a head of cabbage or something. There's a lot of cabbage leaves in here, as you can see. This, I think, is the butt end of a head of lettuce. But other than that, the rest of everything that you see in here looks like just little bits of leafy stuff. So I don't think that this stuff is going to last very long. It might be necessary to come back in here and feed this bin again at some point soon. Lately I've been trying to um, include this stuff in most of my bins, and I'm going to include it here as well, even though I don't see a problem with mites. This is neem seed meal. And um, at this point I'm really kind of treating it as a preventative measure also, because it's supposed to um, prevent mites from being able to... Um, reproduce and while I like the idea of having mites in my bins um, in limited numbers I just don't like the idea of them kind of swarming my bins and taking over and I've had that happening in some of my bins lately so I'm looking to reduce the mite populations in most of my systems luckily here I'm not really seeing that I'd like for it to stay that way so this, um, this is also just paper, coffee filter that can go in here as additional bedding. And you know what, I'm going to allocate a fresh piece of um, newspaper to do the covering up with at the end. So we'll take this one piece that was sort of draped over the top of the material and spread this down into the feeding area too as supplemental bedding. I think that's a really nice, generous supply of bedding for this system. It's um, a lot more generous than you normally see me applying. <laughs> so I've got a little bit more of this neem seed meal that I allocated to this feeding, so I'm going to just sort of 
blend that in with the remainder of the material. So I think the way I'm going to do that is to stack up what is left on the outskirts of the bin. Look at that. Looks like all the worms came over to this side of the bin to hang out. Look at that. Holy cow. That is a lot of worms. And they're fast movers, so I'm saying I'm guessing that the majority of these are those Indian blue worms. That was a little bit of an unexpected surprise. It was fun to see. So here's more bedding. I attribute large amounts of bedding all over the bin to the original creation of the bin. And since it's only a 22-day-old system, still it's reasonable to expect that there's going to be a good amount of the original bedding that the bin was built with remaining. Um, so it's pretty normal, I believe. So the, the neem seed meal or the neem cake, I'm still kind of getting used to the use of this stuff because I'm, I've been trying so many different things to try to deal with the the mites in my systems and at first I was sort of just sprinkling it over the top and people started suggesting that I blend it in so here we're blending it in kind of spreading it around throughout the stuff and it kind of makes sense too so there's no real accounting for the where the uh, the mites are going to be I mean you can kind of predict where they're going to be because they tend to gravitate towards where the food is and where the moisture is um, and that's part of the reason I focused a lot of its application down the middle where the, the food is. So, I think this bin is looking pretty good. Nice generous application of bedding to go with the feeding. And I've got a piece of uh, newspaper here that we can apply. It's, um, it's one of these portions of the supermarket circular which is sort of really long and narrow. I'm just going to sort of tear it down the middle so that I can spread it out as two separate pieces across the top. And in a lot of my bins, I've been sort of transitioning away from a very thorough covering of plastic, like what we had here in the beginning, um, and replacing it with bubble wrap so that the bubble wrap hopefully provides a little bit more uh, airflow beneath itself but I think in a new bin like this where there's so much bedding still and a lot of loose materials that allow for airflow anyway I think I prefer the idea of trying to lock in the moisture a little bit better in systems like this and then later on allowing for a little bit more airflow so here a little deviation from what I've been doing in most of my bins is that I'm going to um, stick with um, the complete sheet of paper that goes edge to edge all the way around in the hopes of keeping all this moisture in here a lot of dry bedding a lot of dry cardboard was put in here these two dry pieces of paper so I've got a feeling we're going to come up with a pretty good balance between dry and moist materials in here and maintain a pretty comfortable space for the worms so that's pretty much it for my mixed bin my 22 day old mixed bin now receiving its second feeding since the worms were introduced in addition to the food that was placed into the bin originally when I built it so three applications of food so far for these little guys and it does seem like there's vast numbers of them in here so I think they're gonna do a pretty good job on breaking this stuff down I'll probably have to check back in here in another week or so to see how they're coming along so that's it for today everyone hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did please remember to leave me a thumbs up that's always really appreciated if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel too that's really appreciated as well all right everyone have a great day bye now